let's talk about steady flow systems. When we have a device that operates under the same conditions for a long time, we call them steady flow devices. You've seen a lot of them already, like turbines, compressors, even your garden hose nozzle are all steady flow devices because once they start up, the fluid flows through the system steadily. That process is called a steady flow process. In other words, there is no change with time. So the volume, mass, and the total energy content of the control volume stays the same. Also, the mass that enters the system is equal to the mass that leaves the system. So to simplify things, imagine we have a system like this. Here, we have some mass flow entering the system. We will say 10 kilograms per second. On the other side, we have two exits. One has an exit flow of 7 kilograms per second, and the other one 3 kilograms per second. So that means the mass flow that's entering is not equal to a single exit on the right side. However, if we just look at the mass flow that's entering, that won't change with time. The same for each of the individual exits. The entering one remains at 10 kilograms per second, the top one at 7 kilograms per second, and the bottom one at 3 kilograms per second. Now if we sum the mass flow coming in and then sum the mass flow leaving, then those two will be equal. We can represent that like this. So again, while individual inlets and outlets might have different mass flows, the total coming in must equal the total leaving. And each of these inlets and outlets will have a steady mass flow, meaning the rate of mass flow won't change with time. For a system that has a single stream, so that means one entrance and one exit, then we can write a mass balance equation like this. Each mass flow can be found by multiplying the density by the average velocity by the cross-sectional area normal to the flow direction. During a steady flow system, the amount of energy entering a control volume must equal the amount of energy leaving the system. We can write that like this. So this could be heat, work, or mass. We can expand this equation to cover all the types of energy we just mentioned. Remember from the previous video that this theta symbol represents the energy of a flowing fluid. So we can expand it further like this. Let's go through each term. This is the rate of heat transfer between the system and the surroundings. This is power. This is mass flow. This is enthalpy. This is the kinetic energy. And this is potential energy. There are a lot of different types of steady flow devices. Some of them include nozzles and diffusers, turbines and compressors, throttling valves, mixing chambers, heat exchangers, and pipes and ducts. In this video, we're looking at just nozzles and diffusers, and in the future videos, we will cover the rest. A nozzle is a device that increases the velocity of a fluid by reducing the pressure. A diffuser, on the other hand, increases pressure by reducing the velocity of the fluid. You probably experienced this with garden hose nozzles. But nozzles and diffusers are also in jet engines, rockets, and more. There are some general characteristics for nozzles and diffusers that you should keep in mind. Usually, the rate of heat transfer between the fluid that's flowing through the system with the surroundings is small, so small that it's negligible, which means Q dot is usually zero. The work involved when it comes to nozzles and diffusers are also negligible. Also, change in potential energy is negligible. However, the fluid in nozzles and diffusers tend to experience large changes in velocity, so kinetic energy will not be zero. Keeping this in mind, our big energy balance equation will usually simplify to look like this. So we have enthalpy change and velocity change. Remember that enthalpy change can be found by using this equation. So we multiply specific heat by the change in temperature. Keeping all of this in mind, let's go through some examples to see how we can apply what we learned. In this question, we have a jet engine that decreases the kinetic energy of the air entering the compressor. We need to figure out the velocity of the air as it exits the diffuser. Let's write down what we know. The initial pressure is 100 kilopascals and initial temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. The air enters at a velocity of 350 meters per second. At the exit side, the pressure is 200 kilopascals and the temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. We will start off by writing down our energy balance equation for a steady flow process. So, rate of energy in is equal to the rate of energy out. 
we can express all of the energy that's associated with the system like this. Now since this is a diffuser problem, there is no work, heat transfer is negligible, and potential energy change is also negligible. That means we just need to consider enthalpy and kinetic energy, so our equation simplifies to this. The mass flow is the same since it's one inlet and one exit, so we can cancel them out to further simplify our equation. We can bring enthalpy to one side and kinetic energy to the other side. Enthalpy can be found using this equation so we can replace it. Next, multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fractions. We have everything we need except for the specific heat value. To find it, we can use a table, but we need the average temperature to use it. So we just add up the initial and final temperature and divide it by 2. We get 60 degrees Celsius or 333 Kelvin. Now we can look at our table. So at 333 Kelvin, our value would be between 1.005 and 1.008. So we will extrapolate and use 1.007. Now we can go back to our equation and start plugging in values. When we simplify, we get square meters over seconds squared, which is equal to joules per kilogram. Problem is, our left side value is in kilojoules per kilogram. So we need to multiply it by a thousand to get it in joules per kilogram. Now we can take the square root, and that gives us 40.7 meters per second. Remember again that joules per kilogram is equal to meters squared over seconds squared, so taking the square root gives us meters per second. Let's take a look at this problem, where we have refrigerant 134A entering a nozzle, and we need to figure out the exit velocity and the ratio of the inlet to the exit area. First, we will write down what we know. The initial pressure is 700 kilopascals, the initial temperature is 120 degrees Celsius, and the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. The final pressure is 400 kilopascals, and the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So as usual, we start off with our energy balance equation. Since this is a nozzle, our work is zero, heat transfer is negligible, and potential energy change is also negligible. All we need to consider is enthalpy and kinetic energy. Since in the nozzle we have one inlet and one outlet, the mass flow is the same, so we can cancel it out. Since this is R134A, we can actually figure out the enthalpy values based on the given information by looking them up on the superheated refrigerant table. For initial enthalpy, the pressure is 700 kilopascals and the temperature is 120 degrees Celsius. So the value we're looking for is right here. For the next part of our question, we will need this specific volume, so I'm going to write that down since we have the table up. That's the value right here. For final enthalpy, the pressure is 400 kilopascals and the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So the value we need is right here. Again, I'm going to write down the specific volume value as well. Now that we have these values, we can plug them in into our equation. Remember that square meters over second squared is joules per kilogram, so we need to multiply the kilojoules value by a thousand to make sure our units are the same. Solving by taking the square root gives us 409.9 meters per second. The next part of the question asks us to calculate the ratio of the inlet to the exit area of the nozzle. For that, we just need to use the mass balance equation. We can expand further by writing down the equation for mass flow. Then we need to eliminate density since we don't have that value. Remember that density is 1 over specific volume, so let's replace it. Now we will isolate this equation so that we have a ratio of A1 over A2. Don't get the specific volume and velocity confused, even though the letters look similar. So now we can plug our values in because remember, we found the specific volume values before. Don't forget that we found the final velocity in the previous step of the question. Let's solve and we get our ratio. In this question, we have steam entering a nozzle and we need to figure out the mass flow rate, the exit velocity of the steam, and the exit area. Let's start off by writing down what we know. The initial pressure is 4 megapascals, the temperature is 400 degrees Celsius, and the velocity is 60 meters per second. When the steam exits, it leaves with a pressure of 2 megapascals, and the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius. The inlet area of the nozzle is 50 square centimeters, and we're told that there is a heat loss of 75 kilojoules per second. 
For this problem, we're going to need specific volume values and enthalpy values. So let's figure those out using steam tables. The initial pressure is 4 MPa and the temperature is 400 degrees Celsius, so our specific volume value is right here. And our enthalpy value is here. Next, we have a pressure of 2 MPa and a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. So our specific volume value is here, and this is the enthalpy value. The first step requires us to calculate the mass flow rate. Since we have one inlet and one outlet, our mass flow in is equal to mass flow out. We can find the mass flow rate using the mass balance equation. Since we don't have density, we can replace it with specific volume. Now we can plug our values in. Solving gives us the mass flow rate. The next part of the question wants us to find the exit velocity of the steam. For that, we need to write our energy balance equation. In this problem, we do need to consider heat loss since we're told that there is some loss of heat when the steam exits the nozzle. However, work done and potential energy are negligible. We can actually just plug values in right now since we have all the values we need. Solving gives us a velocity of 589.4 meters per second. One thing to note here is that each of the kilojoule terms must be multiplied by 1000 so that it's in joules just like we did in the previous questions, or you won't get the right answer. The last step requires us to find the exit area of the nozzle. For that, we can use the equation to find mass flow. We don't have density, so we can replace it with specific volume. Let's plug our values in. Solving gives us the area. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to steady flow with respect to nozzles and diffusers. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.